Hello, everybody. This is Dale, your voice of the Dayton Christian Warriors, along with Coach Doug Adams again. Doug, how you doing today? Good. Good, good. Today is Thursday, February 24th. And today's Warrior Wrap-Up, we're going to talk a little bit about the schedule. Everybody wants to know who we're playing, when we're playing them, you know, what kind of teams and um, uh, competition we're going to be playing against this year. And so uh, that's what this Warrior Wrap-Up is going to be about. So just to give you a little bit of an of a update about what's going on with the um, schedule this year, we've got four scrimmages. We've always played four scrimmages, but never in Vero Beach, Florida, that's right? That's true. Yeah, we try to... Yep. We tried to do that, but COVID came along, so yeah. uh, so we won't be playing the Carols and, and those teams again this year, but we're going to have a good time in Florida. Uh, I, I show a total of 24 scheduled conference and non-conference games, 16 which are non-conference, 8 which are conference, and uh, I show Troy Christian is now being a non-conference game. It's a non-conference, but it's a doubleheader. Right, doubleheader. So. Yeah. Uh, I see a PBR showcase at Newton High School, which is going to be an interesting conversation when we get to that part. Uh -huh. And everybody wants to know, are we playing teams that are uh, uh, higher division than us? I show us in Division 4. Yep. Uh, I see that we're going to play one Division 1 team. Division 1 teams generally don't like to play us. Uh, division 2 teams, it looks like there's two Division 2 teams. Uh -huh. I count out nine Division uh, 3 teams. Uh -huh. uh, and then there are... Um, Against Division Four non-conference, there's three games. Correct. So the rest of those are all obviously like really conference games that we have. So we're going to go a little bit over the schedule here. We hope that you guys will enjoy uh, what we have for you here. So um, obviously the first thing we're going to talk about is is going to Florida in March and not have to be here in <laughs> in in March right in Ohio, right? Yeah, absolutely. So I mean, obviously the biggest thing about this trip is while we're down there, we're going to do some missions. Um, and, you know, at least one, one day, uh, we're going to try to do missions. We're going to try to reach out to the community. We're going to try to help and volunteer and, and, you know, and do those things. So I think that's important. Uh, that's what Dayton Christian's all about, honestly. And truthfully, that's the most important thing that we do. Uh, so we're going to do some missions while we're gone. We're going to live on mission, and uh, we're going to play some baseball games. we get some really tough competition. Yeah. And, uh, and it'll be nice to get away with our guys for five days and, you know, kind of, you know, with the team meals and uh, try to get that camaraderie and get to know each other and, you know, really start to build that trust. Well, they're all going to be staying together in the same place at the facility. Is that right? Yeah. So, yeah, we're going to we're going to pair up with some seniors. We got some adult chaperones, all that fun stuff. And, uh, you know, we made it very clear we're going to we're going to room them, you know, the right way. So the seniors can help the young guys and, uh and we'll have early morning hitting and games every day and uh, some mission stuff and, you know, some team meals, and it's going to be a lot of fun. So are there actually – I know there's obviously the games. There's some – you mentioned hitting practice. Are there actual times where they're going to have, like, a two-hour practice session in a yeah, day? Yeah, so or? our first day of that Monday, we'll, we'll have a two-hour practice. We'll go to lunch together as a team. We'll have a two-hour practice to get used to our surroundings after a long bus ride. Um, mm -hmm. And then try to get you know our feet back, and then we'll probably go get check into our rooms, uh, all that. Come back for to the complex for dinner that night, um, and you know, basically from that point we'll we'll have you know breakfast at the hotel, um, and we'll have lunch and dinner at the complex each night. Okay, cool, cool. Uh, I I basically kind of grew up in Vero Beach, Florida, in the mm -hmm. summers. We had uh, family friends when I was a young kid. As young as six, mom and dad would put me on an airplane <laughs> in Charlotte, send me through Atlanta. I changed planes by myself at six years old. Could you imagine doing that now? No. Uh, and then I would fly down to Melbourne, Florida, and our friends, our family friends, would pick would pick me up, and I would spend some time down there. So I got to uh, learn a lot about Vera Beach. It's a really nice area. Uh, but one of the cool things was uh, I actually got to go to it was called Dodger Town then. It's, yep. So um, and so. Um, uh, and of course, now it's Jackie Robinson oh, complex, complex yep. but it was Dodger Town then, and that's where the uh, uh, the Dodgers used to do their preseason uh, spring training. And then the Vero Beach Dodgers, of course, played there. And so I got to see the Vero Beach Dodgers play there. And I remember there used to be a a hill. There wasn't a fence; there was just a hill. And if you ended up over the fence, over the hill, it was a home run then. So I, I'm sure they probably put a fence up there by now. But but we're going to enjoy Vero Beach an awful lot. So yeah. uh, we're looking forward to that. Um, so let's start off with our, our schedule. We begin our, our season opener against uh, National Trail. It's going to be at National Trail. They're one of our D3 teams uh, that's coming up. And last year, this was our opening. It was not only our opening game of the season, it was our home opener. And Naaman started it off in yep. style. Yeah, Naaman obviously probably his best start as a warrior. I don't know how it couldn't be. 
you know, threw a no-hitter. Uh, National Trail was young last year. Uh, Tyler's a phenomenal coach, uh, so I know they're going to be better because they're bringing a lot of guys back. Um, he does a great job at trail. Um, so I, and it's a road contest, right? So early in the year when you go on the road, it's tough. Yeah. Uh, when you're not ready for it, you know, it's early. That'll be our first game in Ohio, <laughs> right, because we got four scrimmages in Florida. So uh, I think it'll be important that we, you know, or that we're ready to play. Trail will be incredible competition. They're D3, so that helps us, you know, when the tournament comes with the higher division record. Uh, so it'll be an important game. Yeah, cool. Well, we're all looking forward to, to that yeah. after the scrimmages. And, uh, of course, by then everybody will be back home and back into the routine of things after spring break. Uh, then our next game is going to be our only D1 opponent, which is Wayne High School. And last year we had a hard-fought battle with them, and, and it was really tough at first. But Carnegie's came in and just kind of shut the door uh, there in the last uh, couple, two or three innings of that game and became player of the game that, that game. Absolutely. I would say that was the game where we became us. Uh, I lost my mind in, like, the third <laughs> inning. I remember that. Kids still talk about it. That's probably the one time I've yelled and screamed at Dayton Christian, like, in a game scenario. Uh, <laughs> We weren't playing real well. I thought we were a little intimidated by the situation up there at a G-Walk school. Um, but, yeah, Luke came in, steadied the ship after Ryan battled for us. I remember Naaman almost went yard into that yeah. crosswind yeah. off the fence in right center. Uh, Wayne brought back – they have a new coach. Uh, they brought back a lot of kids, uh, three of which I coach in the summer. So uh, they'll be ready for us, actually four of which I coach in the summer, I guess, uh, with, you know, if you count throughout the program. So – It'll be a really fun game. Uh, Wayne, like I said, they should be better. They're going to be senior heavy. Um, you know, so that'll be a lot of fun. Cool, cool. I think we're looking forward to playing the D1 team. We always like to see oh, that to kind of see where we I are. I want to schedule them as many as possible. Unfortunately, a couple uh, couldn't get us on their schedule this year. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay, Coach, I hate to do this, but it's time to get ugly in the face. <laughs> All right, so we played we played Cedarville. They're D14. Um, we, had a, we beat them last year by one run, which was the second game of the doubleheader, right after Naaman yeah, pitched the no-hitter. Yeah, we actually had a big lead on them, and then they kept chipping away <sighs> and crawling back into the game, yep. and we just held on. And then I'll let you go ahead with the rest. Yeah, so <laughs> the district final game was tough, right? They, uh, they, they had a great team. Um, they still have a great team, you know. They had a phenomenal senior pitcher last year who, who owned us in the – districts I mean that's all you can say it's facts right he was awesome um he pitched phenomenal when we had one hit maybe two um I remember Isaac Knopf had one I don't know if we had another one or not uh but they were phenomenal they were ready for us uh they played a phenomenal game they're a phenomenal club um they made a run right in the tournament last year uh this will be a great test for us early in the year to see how we look against one of D4's best in the area, right? Mm -hmm. So that'll be a phenomenal thing. I'm, I'm glad they're still on the schedule. Uh, it's a long drive to Cedarville, but it's going to be worth it. It's going to make us a better baseball team, regardless of how the outcome is. Uh, and I think that's one of those games that gets you tournament ready. No, absolutely, absolutely. Well, I hope that the, uh, I hope that everybody's ready for that one because I know that uh, I know that we as coaches and and as uh, as parents are going to be very ready for that one. Uh, we have a little stretch here. We come up with Trotwood Madison. Yep. Um, we play there at their high school. Uh -huh. um, they're a D2 team. Yep. Um, struggled with us a little bit last year. Yeah. Um, after that, we go to uh, Marymount High School. I think that's in Cincinnati. I'm it not is. familiar with them, but they're a D3 team. Yeah, they're good. Uh, Marymount's good. They've had some really good players over the years. Uh, I can think back to, I believe it was the 2012 class was really good there. Um, I've been doing this a long time, so I might have got my year confused, but so I mean they're they're a good program, but they, you know they're all that Cincinnati competition is pretty tough. Mm -hmm. So uh, you know us, we're always trying to make our schedule tougher to prepare our guys for tournament play. Mm -hmm. um, and anytime you go on the road to a Cincinnati opponent, um, it can be a really tough situation. It'll be good for our guys. Good, good. Looking forward to that one. All right, then we start our uh, the, the conference uh, portion. We play our first conference game. We have what we call home and home because if you look at the schedule. Yep. <clears throat> these conference games are lined up back to back. We'll play at their place and then at our place mm -hmm. within two to three days of each other. Yep. Um, so I just kind of call them home and home. And this is a league game, April fifth and fifth, and then the seventh. Um, and you know, we beat it's Legacy Christian, and I, we beat them 
We beat them. The scores look like we beat them pretty good, but I think the games were a lot closer than, than the actual Yeah, score. I mean, the one game, right, we played them, Cardegas was unreal, and it was so cold mm-hmm. that once we got a lead, I felt like everybody in the game, both sides kind of checked out, and we beat them 10-1 to or 7-1, to whatever it was. Mm-hmm. Uh, the other game, the Newell kid pitched unbelievable, and uh, he's only going to get better. So Legacy's a real threat. Um, to win the conference this year. They're a really good team. Uh, like I said, I mean, the Adam Knoll kid is special. And they brought back some seniors. They had a senior catcher last or junior catcher last year that's back as a senior. They added a kid, a freshman named Nathan Witt, who plays first base and pitches. Uh, they have a catcher named Justin Harfont, who sub two pop time, uh, 76, 77 on the mound, uh, can really hit. Um, it's just. They got a new coach. The players are raving about him, so he must be doing a phenomenal job. Uh, they're really excited for this season, and I think they have full expectations of coming to take the crown that we've earned the last four years. That's going to be a war. <laughs> it's a little rough that it's the first league doubleheader, of the, or the first league mm-hmm. series of the year, but it is what it is. You know, you play the schedule, you're, you're dealt, right? right? And when the conference schedule, you don't pick it. You're given it, right? right. So... Uh, there's a very good possibility that the Metro Buckeye could be decided the first week of April. Wow. Well, boys, be ready. That's all I can say. <laughs> just be ready. Hey, nobody cares. Work hard. Okay? <laughs> uh, well, once we get past those two games, we play another uh, It's a Division three team. We, it was a game that was added to our schedule late last year against Purcell Marion High School. Uh, we went down to the uh, Reds Youth Center and yep. played them. Uh, it was a game I remember because, you know, Caleb started pitch. He did. Starting pitcher. He did a phenomenal job. He just ran out of gas in the fifth yeah, inning. Yeah, I, sh- I should have pulled him an inning sooner. I think he gave up the lead in the sixth. Um, I should have pulled him the inning earlier. I knew that, but we the only reason we didn't was because we had Troy the next day in a doubleheader. Uh, we faced that legit lefty, mm-hmm, do you remember? Mm-hmm, I do. He was uh, good. That was really, really good, and uh, it was a great game that we lost late, but uh, it was good competition. They're a GCL school, so that's always fun, and uh, – you know, we'll be ready for them. Cool. We look forward to having them on our field this year. All right, we're going to go back uh, to another home-and-home home league uh, game, uh, league series against uh, Yellow Springs. Mm-hmm. Caleb left us some bulletin board material. You can't do that against you. Yeah, so, I mean, as far as, as far as Yellow Springs goes, uh, they had, what, uh, 14 players last year, and I believe 13 were freshmen and sophomores. So they'll be better. Um, they'll get be more experienced. So we'll have to come to play. Well, one thing I know is you can't take anybody for granted. Right. I mean, Dayton Christian's clearly going to have a target on their back. Yeah. For everybody. All right, let's go back out of conference again to another school that I hadn't heard of, uh, but their D3 school at Bethel High School. I think that's up in Tip City. Yeah, Bethel, uh, their their program's getting better. Um, they had some down times about, you know, four or five years ago. They're starting to go on the upward trend. Um you know, Bethel will be a, when we used to be D3, they used to be, a, you know, in our division uh, with the old crew in 2019, 2020. They were in our in our sectional. Uh, so it'll be good competition for us. Um, it'll be fun to play those guys. I don't know much about them, but I'm excited to play the game. Cool. Well, that's a little trip up to Tip, Tip City for us. Then we're going to play another one. This is going to be a fun one for you to talk about against Carlisle. You're all friends, the D3, D3 yeah. Carlisle Indians. Um Played them in a hard-fought game last year at home. Yeah, that was a rough game for us. We had the Brett thing. We had the Naaman thing. It was a uh, – uh, love Coach Hawkins, one of my best friends in coaching. Uh, Coach Steckel, son plays for me in the summer. Um, you know, Coach Tencher does a great job uh, as a pitching guy over there. Um, they're loaded, right? They got Colby Millard's back for his junior year. They got the Coakley kid. Uh, he's really, really good at shortstop. Uh, they got the Gill kid who's throwing mid-80s. Uh, there's a freshman there that I coach in the summer named Brendan Rowe, who's already 84 on the mound and 94 off the bat. Uh, they have another f- a first baseman there who's a freshman who, once again, plays for us in the summer. He's 90 off the bat, kid named Cooper Steckel. He's really, really good. Um, so that's going to be a great, a great challenge for us. And it'll be fun to play at Carlisle. We've never actually mm-hmm. got to do that, right? So mm-hmm. uh, since I've been at D.C., uh, they've came to our place a couple times, but we've never been there. So. I'm excited to play in Carlisle. I, you know, I have a huge level of respect for Coach Hawkins and that program over there, so that'll be a lot of fun. Cool, cool. Uh, here's another one that might cause you to get a little ugly in the face is Tri Village, but we get them <laughs> at D.C. Uh, this year. Tri- um, yeah, in all honesty, like I said last year, and it was what it was, Tri Village, I voted them number one in the in the uh, sectional last year. I thought they earned it. They beat us. Um, 
it was probably the worst game we've ever played as, with me as the coach of Dane Christian. Um, it was awful. Uh, it was prom weekend, or we probably mm-hmm. would have had a 6 a.m. practice that Saturday at the night, the morning after the game. Uh, it was not good. We were not, and they kicked our butts, you know. So uh, obviously, we want to keep them on the schedule. They're great Division Four competition. It's somebody we're probably going to run to in the sectional or the dish, you know, in the sectional round, maybe in the regional even, right? If we come out, so. Uh, they're really good. Uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. I'm looking forward to playing them. Well, frankly, I'm glad to not have to drive all the way to New Madison. <laughs> that's that's like quite, quite a haul, so I'm yeah. glad they get to make the trip down here to us. Uh, back to the league. We're going to do another home-and-home home against Middletown Christian. Uh, I think they were probably a little better than uh, than their scores indicated last year as well. Yeah, I mean, obviously last year their ace, Dylan Johnson, who's really good. He's going to play in college at the next level. Uh, he missed most of the last season. Uh, couldn't pitch. Um, he's healthy now. Uh, which means he'll be low to mid-80s and ready to rock. <laughs> uh, so he's really, really good. Um, they brought back basically their entire team. Uh, they're well coached. Um, you know, I've, it was fun. As the Dayton Christian coach, I was at Dylan signing because he's a Canes mm-hmm. kid, and mm-hmm. uh, you know, I got to see their coach. High level of respect for their coaching staff. Um, they're going to be good. Uh, and, and so they're right there on the cusp. I don't know if they're on our on that. You know, I don't know where they're. They're close. They're close. They're going to have a pretty good year. So that'll be a really, really tough game for us. That'll be a lot of fun. Well, Stamper, one of their pitchers, he's about six five. Yep. I mean, I have to look up to him. He plays uh, on Caleb's summer team, yep. uh, and he has really improved as a pitcher. Yeah. So we're going to face Dylan and Stamper in two games. I mean, that's going to be. Yeah. That's going to be that's going to be a tough week for us. Well, I've seen his improvement. He's he's a, he's going to be a tough he's going to yeah. be a tough get there. So. All right, cool. Back to uh, back to some non-conference. We get Brookville. They're going to come down and visit us. They're a D3 team. Uh, and last year, it was an exciting game, and Luke made it even more exciting at the end with a great catch in the outfield and finished off the double play. Yeah, Luke had that double play ball to end the game. Um, new coach there, Chuck Harlow, retired, which is sad for the game, right? Uh, Chuck leaving, sad for the game. Uh, when I was going through everything in the offseason, talking about coaching and jobs and all that, he was one of the guys I called, and we had a great conversation. Mm-hmm. Um, but they also hired a great baseball coach in, in Tyler Eaton, right? So that's going to be a lot of fun to compete with him. Um, they hit a home run as their head coaching hire. So Brookville, they made a phenomenal run in the tournament last year, but they're only going to get stronger with this coaching hire. That I can guarantee you. Cool, cool. We'll look forward to having them at uh, Honaker Field to play us. All right, now it's time to get ugly for the third time. We got our doubleheader with our, I would guess I would call them our arch rival, whether they're conference or not, Troy yeah. Christian. Yeah, I mean, you know what it is. I mean, if you're a sports fan, you get it. There's that team, right? And a lot of coaches will say, nope, one day at a time, you're not focused. Anybody who says that about a rival's lion, mm-hmm. right, mm-hmm. you know what they're doing 364 days a year. You know who they're playing. You know how, what they're doing. You know who's going to be on their team. Like, rivalries are fun. Mm-hmm. I don't think I don't look at it as a negative. It doesn't have to be a disrespectful rivalry to be a rivalry, right? You can have a high level of respect for all those guys over there and still want to compete your butt off against them, right? Mm-hmm. So, and that's what it is. I mean, rivalries bring out the best in you as an athlete. Or they bring out the worst, right? If Whoever you are is going to show in those days. Uh, you know, for a lot of, in our area, right, everybody loves Ohio State, Michigan. It is what it is. Well, in, in, in Dayton Christian baseball, that's Troy Christian. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And we'll... And the, whether they're in our conference or playing in Alaska, like we're going to try to get them on the schedule and we're going to compete our butts off against them, right? Because Dayton Christian, Troy Christian, th- those games are special. Mm-hmm. Win, lose, or draw, those games are special, right? So uh, obviously Tony does a phenomenal job. Lucas should have been the state player of the year last year. Um, he was all area player of the year. He should have been the state player of the year in my opinion. Uh, they've gotten only stronger. You know, you got Ben Major. He's going to get another year under his belt. I know they added a ridiculous freshman class. Um, so it's going to be a lot of fun to have them in a doubleheader. Well, last year, obviously, them being part of the conference, we went there and played the doubleheader there, and that resulted in a – we split the doubleheader. Um, and the first game we played, went against Lucas Day, and that was honestly one of the games where I think that we felt like we were going to be really challenged, but our boys really were patient at the plate. Yeah. Fouled a lot of balls off, made him throw a lot of pitches, yeah. and got him out of the game, and we were able to attack the bullpen. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, mm-hmm. and obviously in the second game, they threw a starter who owned us, right? So yep. uh, Nate Scanlon was phenomenal that day. Yep. Uh, you know, Nate obviously, you know, was phenomenal, and, and you know, in the in the first game, and was able to get us a conference title and all that stuff, and just because we were able to hold serve against them, mm-hmm. and uh, you know, 
that's where we're at. Well, just because it's a shared uh, conference title, that still create that still counts as a four P. <laughs> Absolutely. Let's just make sure that that is uh, that that is uh, communicated. Yep. <clears throat> All right. Here's a, here's another one. Um, a league game coming up. Uh, home and home against Emmanuel Christian, and yep. then uh, last year against Emmanuel Christian at Emmanuel Christian, we can call it D Day or Dog Pile Day. Yeah. Uh, so we're gonna. This is. Uh, I believe this is our last. Uh, our last league uh, series it is. of the year. It is for sure. So, hopefully, we're in that position. Uh, you can't get to the. You can't get to that position in game nine, right? Mm -hmm. You got to take care of the first eight. So, hopefully, on game nine, um, we're in that position. You know, at their place. Uh, I know they want us. I, I know there were some feelings there with our dog pile day, right? Um, so, you know, Emmanuel, I don't really know where they're at right now, right? The program's been kind of a constant change, so I don't know what to expect from them this year, but luckily we'll be able to see and see them before that, and we'll kind of learn who they are and what they're accomplishing and before we play them, so it's good to know. Well, yeah, I, can, I mean, again, that's just a team that's targets on your back on that one, and I, I think I remember uh, Naaman got hold of one and put it in somebody's backyard he out did. there. 100%. I think it may have uh, gone into the toilet. I'm not sure, but uh, he drilled one out. Um, then we've got something I know that you were excited about. Um, you mentioned it earlier in the season. It's the Newton High School PBR Showcase on yeah, May the so, 7th. Yeah, so PBR, they, they, they have these big high school showcases where they pick only what they consider are the top programs, and they put you up against somebody in your division, kind of like a tournament preview, right? Mm -hmm. So, uh, and because Newton has turf, they're hosted. <laughs> So because we're D4, we get Newton, which is fine. It's honored to be picked. It's going to be great to be covered by PBR. That's wonderful for our guys. It's wonderful mm -hmm. for their recruiting if they're an uncommitted guy. Um, it's great for our senior guys because they're getting on, they're, they're getting watched by PBR, and, you know, they're going to see the top competition in our area. Mm -hmm. And Newton's a phenomenal D4. Jordan does an incredible job. Um, you know, so that game got moved to 11 a.m. that day uh, because I believe that's prom night for Newton. Um, so, but it's going to be an absolute war. Newton's phenomenal. We're at their place. Uh, but, boy, what, you know, when you're talking the first weekend in May, you know, about a week or so before the tournament yeah. starts, what better prep is there than playing Newton at their place? Yeah. So that'll be great exposure for our guys. It'll be great a great experience. It'll be a tough environment. It'll be a lot of fun. Um, it'll really challenge our guys, and it'll get us tournament ready. So it's a one-game showcase One game kind showcase, of thing. Okay, absolutely. Cool. cool, and so that's against Newton. Yep. Newton High School. Okay. All right, then uh, then we move on down the schedule. We're starting to get near the end here. We've got a D2 um, Valley View. They're they're tough. They're always tough. Yeah, Valley View's tough. Matt does a great job. You know, Gentry's built a program over there. He's built a culture. Uh, you know, I have a high level of respect for Matt. Um, Mike Kinder, his assistant, uh, love Mike. Um, so they'll do a phenomenal job. They're going to be great in the SWBL. Uh, you know, we did. We didn't get to play them last year. Was, we got rained out. It was sad, uh, you know. Mm -hmm. I really enjoy that game. We played at their place in 2019. Mm -hmm. uh, we have an inside joke about that game. Ask Naaman about it later if you ever get a chance, right, you know, because that was Red's opening day, and he was a freshman, and he didn't understand the commitment it took. Uh, so, yeah, it's kind of a fun story to bring up the Naaman now that he's committed and figured it out. But uh, So it'll be a lot of fun to play them. Uh, last time we played them, like I said, I mean, we played at Valley View. Uh, this time they come to our place. It'll be a lot of fun. Glad to have them come down. Again, that's another hall out there, but they got a, they got a nice facility they out do. there. Uh, then we uh, we have another D re, uh, D three opponent in Northridge. We played them last year, and we, honestly, it was just kind of an underwhelming game. Yeah. Uh, but we won the game. The D three. So, what what do you think about Northridge? What do you know about them this year? Well, new coach Tyler Venner's. Uh, Tyler Venner's is kind of you know he played in the Canes program when he was in high school. Went and played four years of college. Uh, coach is in the Canes program has for the last three or four years, and now he's a head coach guy. I guess, as you would say, in the coaching tree, right, that I now get to compete against. So that's kind of weird. But, you know, he's a guy who coaches the Canes team. He's a great friend. We talk a lot. Um, phenomenal baseball coach. Uh, his little brother still plays in the Canes program. Uh, he has another kid there, the sophomore named Carson Dyer, who plays in the Canes program. Um, it'll be a lot of fun. Uh, competing against Tyler will be a blast. Hopefully it's a little better than that cold, rainy day we had against him last year. Woo! Yeah. Uh, you know, it'll be late in the year, though, so we'll probably not be able to use too much pitching, I wouldn't think, right, because you'll be saving it for the tournament. But it'll be it'll be fun to compete against Tyler, you know. When, anytime you get to compete against a former player, that's kind of fun. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> so then we got the final game of the year is against a D3 team. It's Madison High School. A yeah. couple, you know, a few years ago, 
they were really good. We were really good. We went down there and we beat them. Last year, a little bit of a different story, I think. That yeah, they, they were young. Uh, they were young, right? So they, I mean, they had, what, 12 seniors in 2020? Mm -hmm. The COVID year, they, we probably would have played them for the region, in my opinion, in 2020. I'll say that, right? I mean, we have, we would have had five mid-80s arms at, mm -hmm. at Division Three. So, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and they, had, but they had Sipple, which was a different guy, yeah. right? He was yeah. different. So, and they had Luke Hughes in that class. So, it would have been a lot of fun to see how that would have played out that year. I truly believe one of us would have went to state. Um, it's not a shot at any other team. It's just facts. Like, that's what I felt, how, mm -hmm. how strongly I felt about that team. Um, you know, and Matt does a phenomenal job. Obviously, Matt was the former coach of Dayton Christian. Uh, you know, I'm glad Matt's getting back to coaching, you know, all that. We're, you know, he needs the season. Uh, you know, he's Matt's a good friend of mine. When we were at the, when we were at the convention, uh, we hung out together, you know, ate a sandwich together, talked baseball, all that stuff. Uh, we joked about the golf simulator in here, and, uh, you know, it'll be a lot of fun to compete against Matt Morrison. He's a really good coach, really good person, so it's a lot, it'll be a lot of fun to compete against him. <coughs> well, that wraps up the schedule portion yep. of that. Uh, there's a lot of games there now. Is there the opportunity or the potential of adding games to this schedule? A hundred percent. We're 25 right now, 24 opponents, right? Because you got the doubleheader with mm -hmm. Troy. Uh, I've got. I've, we've reached out to multiple schools. Um, some couldn't get us on the schedule. Uh, we haven't heard back from some yet. I'm looking for two more. I want to play the full 27. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the more games you get better, the more games you get ready for the tournament, the better, right? right so, right. It, you know, if we schedule one, I'll be happy because you can always save one for that first week of the tournament when you got that long break, uh, like we did with Brookville last year. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. we can always try to mix one in there with whoever's still alive in the tournament. Um, so, but I definitely want to schedule at least one. If we schedule two, I'm thrilled with that. That's fine. Mm -hmm. The good thing about the big roster with our tryout and, and, and a lot of kids coming out is if we need to play, you know, if we need to scrimmage and practice and inter squad and all that fun stuff, right, we can always do some live at bat stuff because we'll have a big roster where mm -hmm. they can face some other pitching where we don't have to throw our tournament pitching, but they, we can get them live at bats and, mm -hmm. you know. So I would prefer to play 27. Right now we're at 25. Uh, you know, but if we end up at 25, we'll make the best of it like we always do. Right, right. I think I said 24 games at the beginning of this. It is 25 because I forgot to count for it twice. So yeah. that's my error. So, uh, folks, that's the schedule. Once we get past that, then obviously we'll be doing sectionals, regionals, uh, uh, districts, regionals, and then on up to state. So I think I got that really right. Yeah, that's okay. the order, yep. So um, today is Thursday. Tryouts will end tomorrow, Friday, February the 25th. Um, any final thoughts? No, um, you know, it's just about our guys. Love my team. They, uh, you know, they got to continue to compete. And, uh, you know, I like where we're at. You know, we're, we're battling a couple things from all, some off-season stuff. Uh, hopefully those guys get back and we need them. Um, you know, and, you know, you know, the Florida trip will be a great experience. But, you know, when it, when it all said and done, it all comes down to March 26th. Yeah. So thank you so much. Yeah. Yeah, uh, you know what? Uh, you're gonna blink, and it's gonna be it's gonna be May. Absolutely, it, you will. So, well, I appreciate your time today. Um, this interview was brought to you by the Dayton Christian Spirit Shop. Um, coach, everybody, Coach uh, Adams put a link to uh, the Spirit Shop on GroupMe. Um, you must order before Sunday, this coming Sunday, May the 27th, February 27th, February 27th. Order before Sunday, okay? For players, what's required is a black t-shirt, purple long sleeve shirt, black shorts, correct? Correct. Okay. Uh, you can buy other stuff on there. That's optional. Parents, you can buy uh, you can buy stuff for yourself or for your family members or whoever. Um, so go ahead and make sure that you get that order done by Sunday. Um, again, the group, the link is on GroupMe. So uh, until next time, this is Coach Adams. Coach Adams, and this is Dale, and we are out. <laughs>